Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Janine Ash, and I'm Youth Family and Literacy Services Manager for the San Mateo County Library. And I'm here to talk about a couple programs that we have working with incarcerated youth. These are teens ages 12 to 18. I still believe that you can make a difference at that age. I think it's better to get them when they're younger, um, but I think there are still some results that can be had from working with this age group. Some sobering statistics, some of these you've already heard. We, uh, is everybody here, does everybody here work with literacy? Would you raise your hands? Not, not, every, not everybody. Um, uh, juvenile offenders have uh, reading problems. About 85% is what the statistics are right now. Low literacy levels, as we know, are strongly associated below paying jobs, unemployment, poverty, and crime. Access to books is essential to reading development and education and training programs, as Jane had said, uh, is very important for uh, stopping repeat offenders. And lastly, and very sadly, this is where a lot of our youth are today, especially minority youth. In San Mateo County, uh, the ethnic breakdown is about 58% Hispanic, 17% black, and 12% Caucasian. And uh, again, it's ages 12 to 18, with the largest group being 17 years, 17 year olds at 38%. About 88% are male. The first program that we do is we have staff that go to the court school. The Office of Education runs a school that is at the facility for these teens. And so two of our staff go out and they book talk quarterly. There are eight classes with about 15 to 20 kids in each class and about 10 independent study students. Students aren't there very long, usually about six weeks, although that's changing. Uh, I was just talking to the youth probation staff the other day and they said uh, that sadly, since all the youth authority programs have closed in California, you're getting some more very serious offenders uh, getting back into the system and this is causing a big problem for them because they're not really sure what to do with these, these kids here. So staff talk about books that are likely to be very popular with teens. They need to be paperback because of their hard back, um, they can actually make them into weapons. Some of the ones that we've used in the past, Gary Soto, uh, Who Am I, or Who Am I Without Him by Sharon Flake, Mixed My Life in Black and White, Fresh Off the Boat. So uh, a lot of good books that are selected by our teen services staff. Uh, Students get to choose one of the books after the book talk is finished. And for some of these students, we've heard that this is actually the very first book that they've owned in their life. And uh, they're very proud of their book. One young man had a book stolen and was very upset by it. And so we, of course, went in and gave him another book. Um, Books are paid for, were originally paid for with grant funding and also donations. But just this year, I'm very excited to say that I have permission to use our collection development budget to buy books for this population. So uh, I, that's a real coup for us. We're very excited about that. The second program that we do is we run a book club at the youth incarceration facility. We have two staff members that go out and do the book club for four weeks. The session runs four weeks. They do it on Thursday nights, one at 6 p.m., one at 7 p.m. One is in the minimum security uh, area of the youth incarceration facility with girls, and the other is in the regular security. And what is exciting about this, too, is a variety of staff participate. We have our literacy staff that participate. We have librarians. We have library assistants that participate. And we have volunteers. How I've been able to get staff to get interested in this is partly by word of mouth. The staff love it, so they tell everybody how much fun it is. And I also put an article in our staff newsletter asking for volunteers to participate. The staff do get paid for their time here. 
And what I always try to do, two staff go in, so I try to match a more experienced staff person with somebody who is less experienced. So during at the, or at the beginning of the four-week session, each girl is given a copy of the book to keep and to read. And again, popular type teen books that are selected by a combination of recommendations from the teen services staff, but also books that the, the staff that are going in want to read. This year, we're using The Glass Castle, The Circuit, Reign of Gold, Persepolis, one book that we were not allowed to use, and very rarely have we ever had our books censored, uh, but we were going to use this book, Cut, and it's a story about a girl that actually cuts herself, which is very common with troubled teens. The youth uh, probation staff were concerned that this could bring up a lot of psychological issues that they didn't really feel that they were prepared to deal with. Girls keep and they read the book and discuss it each week over four weeks. And some of the discussions get really exciting and, and interesting. I know uh, at one point they read the book Whale Rider. And in there, there is a lot of talk about uh, uh, tattoos with the aborigines. And uh, so it led to a whole discussion of, you know, should you be tattooed, should you not be tattooed, where is your place in society if you get a tattoo, does it make a difference if you're going to get a job, et cetera. Uh, the staff usually do an icebreaker each week, and sometimes they'll even do a craft. Again, books are paid for by grants and now with actual library funds. One of the more exciting parts of this program is we've been able to bring in authors. We had Viola Canales come in, who's the author of Tequila Worm, and Ayelet Waldman, who maybe some of you saw speak yesterday, uh, who, was, who was very dynamic. Viola Canales was wonderful. She is somebody who grew up in a barrio, was able to get a scholarship to go to a private high school, ended up going to Harvard, ended up going into the military, ended up working in the Clinton administration. And so when she was there, she's a small little gal, and when she was there, she would ask the girls if they had questions, and if they did, she'd say, stand up, speak up, I want to hear your voice, your voice is important. And um, you could see the girls sitting on the ed edge of their, their seats as she was doing this. It brings kind of chills to me when I'm talking about it. Um, so, I don't need to do that yet. Some challenges, communication is always a challenge whenever you're working with another organization. Um, and just even knowing who to talk with sometimes. We had an escape last year, and so they had to do a lockdown, so we had staff that were all ready to go in, and they got there and to they were told that they, they, can't, they could not go in. So now how we've gotten around that is we make sure staff call the day before they go to check and see if there's a lockdown. We also have the cell phone number of the key staff at the youth probation facility. Another challenge is uh, corporate cultures. Uh, they are very different from libraries. We are concerned about making sure that uh, kids get their reading skills so they can move on in life, and they are very concerned about making sure that the kids stay alive. Uh, there's also uh, very different corporate cultures within the youth incarceration facility. As it turns out, the minimum security staff don't talk to the people in the regular security staff, and they don't talk to the staff in the court school. So, and that was something that took me three years to figure out why people didn't know when things were happening. It's because they weren't talking with each other. Um, I always hold a collaboration meeting before we start our book group, and so I try to bring in youth, youth incarceration staff, library staff, anybody who's going to be working with the program. But again, sometimes this is a problem because I thought I had youth incarceration st staff from all the programs that we were working with, and as it turns out, I didn't this year. I think it's very important to find one advocate 
within the incarceration facility who you can contact, who you can check in with, who will always be there to help you. Find out who is the person at the top. I haven't needed to use it very often, but this year we were having a very difficult time getting our staff fingerprinted because uh, youth incarceration staff were not following through with some of the things that they did. And after a couple months of very frustrating calls, I finally just started calling up the chain of command and things changed that day. So that was very useful. Um, be patient. Whenever you start up a new program like this, there are always bumps. We always take a break. We do several month series, and then we take a break. And when you start up again, it's sort of like you're starting from scratch because there's new people, there's new staff, you have new staff. But it's really worth it. Our staff love it. And I, I, I really, again, think that it's very important for the students that we're working with in, in helping them move on in their life and gather the literacy skills that they need to become educated and members of our society. I do have a handout up here, if you would like it, that has a list of all the books that we've used, our schedule that we do for our girls program, and some other information, a really step-by-step -step what you need to do. So if you want a handout, please come up afterwards. Thank you very much.